Thanks to the Hills and to all of you for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Um, I'm Gordon Moffat and my wife, Catherine. Um, you, some of you may recognize us. And we, despite Walker's claim, have the loudest children. Catherine was a Roman Catholic and I was a Presbyterian. So when we married in 2006, we decided to split the difference and check out the Episcopal Church, <laughs> which led us here to the cathedral. Our first child, Susanna, was baptized here in 2008 while we were in the process of joining the church and taking the Journey in Faith classes. Catherine was received, being a Roman Catholic, and I was confirmed as a member in 2009. And we were graciously sponsored by the Simmons family. And our son, Charlie, was baptized in 2012 here. As many of the other speakers have done, and this is, this, this, the, it's, it's remarkable to me how many of the things that, they, that the other speakers have um, called out as blessings are oriented around our children. It's almost impossible not to, not to speak about this. Um, and it's no surprise. It's the absolute first and most clear thing of what this place means to our, to our family. Um, here are a few vignettes. There, was wonderful there were wonderful pastoral visits from Gene Manning and from Timothy when Charlie was newborn. Those meant a lot. We got to enroll Susanna in the, in the catechesis of the Good Shepherd classes after that lovely orientation that Becky Rochford gave. Um, we heard our kids bring home songs from Vacation Bible School and sing them so that when we came to see the show, we sort of knew the songs. It was kind of, it was kind of nice. Um, Carolyn Bauerschmidt never fails to check up on our kids, ask how they're doing, and know, knows exactly where they are. I remember our daughter Susanna's wide eyes when Ann Stevenson played the angel in the dark tomb during the uh, walkthrough Easter event. Remember little Charlie in the Christmas pageant, although he never got to play the baby Jesus like Carter Payne, but he attempts yearly to upstage the Christ child. <laughs> And of course, both children receiving blessings as toddlers at the communion rail, and then in time, choosing to receive as they begin to understand the sacrament and what's going on. Apart from the, ch the children in our lives, though, one thing that Kath and I particularly enjoy and means a lot to us is the Dean's Forum. The content is extraordinarily thoughtful, intellectually stimulating. I don't know how many of you were here for it today, for instance. That special topic was wonderful. Um, we, <laughs> I mean, it, it, pretty much anything is fair game, and it's done in a very, very thoughtful and imaginative manner. For instance, uh, who remembers <laughs> Listen Matthew with the Ask Me Anything questions? That was fantastic. We've discussed such topics as death, marriage, church architecture, the complex legacy of the English Reformation, careful explorations of the prayer book and unpacking its language, meaningful meditations on our place in the world, community of faith, and all of these combine to provide an explanation and reinforcement of what it means to be an Episcopalian and a Christian. A few years ago, and I hope some of you remember this, Timothy spent some time analyzing the offering and its significance, which was framed with a vivid description of his visit to and participation in a Eucharist in Uganda, where the offering was quite literal. Um, we saw photos of the parishioners there bringing agricultural goods and produce and laying these gifts upon the table. This was a powerful reminder of the way in which we function as cells in the body of the church through our giving. And this is how we help to create blessings for the world, the church, and ourselves. Please be sure to make your pledge so that all of us can continue to share in the blessings of this wonderful place and all you wonderful people in 2020 and far beyond. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Gordon. Much appreciated. Blessings, friend. Thank you so much. So I, I'm grateful for those who, who gave of their sort of time to prepare a reflection on life at Christ Church for them and why giving for them was important. I encourage you, if you would, to, if you haven't yet made your pledge, do so by using a pledge card in your pew or going online or simply stopping by the office uh, during the week to make that happen. In the coming weeks, the, the, the uh, stewardship committee will begin just contacting households who've supported us in the, in the past but have not yet had a chance or taken a chance to record their pledge for the coming year. So to see if we can wrap that up by the end of the year. It's something that parish leadership, the vestry, the finance committee, they use all of that as stated to formulate and use our, for our program budget in the coming year. I just want to uh, notice one